Hi, my name is Sara Naderi, and I am an engineer here at Qualcomm. And welcome to the Think of It Lab. Um, as the designer of this engaging space, I am lucky enough to create engineering experiences that get you excited about what you can build with your imagination. I love living in my imagination. And in high school, I used to have this dream of building these dresses that would move around. And when the opportunity came around to actually build it, I couldn't wait to dive in. And I want to share with you the journey that it took to bring that robot dress alive. With any project, with any big project, I think identifying the phases and the different pieces that need to actually come together is, is probably your first step. You know, the imagination has taken hold. You know, we want to build this crazy um, moving piece, but as an engineer, while I'm aware of the different pieces that need to be filled in, I need experts in those different fields to really kind of bring this to life. To have somebody to be a mentor for a project is really important, I think. And I, I was fortunate enough to have um, our VP of Engineering, Charles Bergen, to help really support and, and bring together that A team, if you will, the team to be able to brainstorm to see if this can actually happen. Uh, as you realize, you know, at Qualcomm Think a Bit Lab, we do create these projects and experiences that get people engaged in engineering. And I want to take it to the next level by using the Dragonboard 410C. And I want to start with this platform because it's a way to not limit our imagination. We get to start with something that's very powerful and we just get to keep building with it. My name is Donald Hudson. I am a senior support staff engineer for Qualcomm Technologies. For me, I always start uh, with CAD software, uh, generally a couple sketches with the, the designers, but then after that, I immediately go into a place which I'm much more familiar with where um, you know, I can put in actual parts and measurements and get something moving. And, and then it, it's a back and forth process. You know, we, we do that several iterations before we start to actually manufacture or print a prototype. And then it became apparent that, you know, this may evolve into something much bigger, something more like a curriculum that other people could do. We got so excited about it. So then one of the big uh, design highlights was to shift it more towards a 3D printing capability. And, you know, so then we took our, our, our prototype and, and just started to rework it so it could be done uh, by everybody. Now, as a robotics, uh, you know, designer, you know, for many years, I know that I, I, I both can have a great idea, but they also have to figure out how the software people are going to deal with, you know, dealing with the information of where a part is in what we call absolute space. So we made a design, um, you know, improvement where we uh, altered the curved shape of the tentacle to put in uh, a commutator. Now, a commutator is a, a special um, spherical, almost ball bearing type device that passes wires or pneumatics or air through it and allows for continuous rotation. And so this became a, an apparent goal of mine. Um, but I had to be careful about it because they may not use it, they may not want it. But you know, my insight told me that it would be uh, a, a valuable consideration to have that capability and it would also allow it to do things that no one else was able to do. My name is Paul Farrell. I'm a staff engineer here at Qualcomm Technologies. Once the actual physical assemblies were put together and we were ready to start interacting with the software and starting to test the motion of the tentacles using a computer and computer controlled motion. Things you have to start thinking about or are how to very safely and systematically start going through the various joints on the tentacles themselves and testing them one by one, testing simple motions and then starting to build more and more complicated motions, starting to string those together in a way that you, you knew that you weren't going to damage your assembly and that you were going to see the desired outcome from the software interaction. Hi, I'm Sarah Gibson and I'm a senior engineer for Qualcomm Technologies. Uh, hi, I'm Jim Wilson and I'm a senior staff engineer for Qualcomm Technologies. So we have to, uh, in order to get these complex motions easy to edit and change, we had to break it down into particular steps or uh, kind of like a storyboard would be in a movie sequence. So to make those individual steps work, it was easier for us if we created a separate command that would execute just that one step. And it's called the move servo command. So then after Jim wrote the move servo command, I needed to write a program that would allow Paul to record the different motion sequences. So. In this program, I can command the servos to um, turn off torque on all the servos. Then he can manually move the tentacle in a certain position where he wants it to be. And then I wrote a program that will then record the position of all the different motors. 
And then I wrote another script that will, um, based on the starting position and then that second position that we recorded, it calculates the velocities that need to be commanded to the servos to achieve that motion sequence. So finally, once we got through and found these safe places, ran, ran these twisting motions, saw that the whole joint and the whole arm was behaving the way we wanted to, we have one script that goes through all of the motions, and then we start taking that same script and applying it to each limb in turn until finally we had all four limbs at moving at the same time and doing all of these range of motions. So part of what made the Dragonboard 410C work really well for us is that we were able to do a lot of our work in prototype stage on a PC and using the tools that we're familiar with and then actually connect the servos that we use in the robot dress to the, the, the host PC and make sure that it worked there first, kind of rehearse some of these motion sequences. And then when we had enough working, we moved to the Dragonboard 410C and it just worked for the most part. It has a graphical shell that's very much like a desktop workstation. Uh, it's a Linux environment that we were using on our host PC is also there on the Dragonboard 410C, so it's very familiar. Once we figured out the functionality of how the tentacles were actually going to work, we knew we needed help with how that's going to translate to a dress. So I'm here at the UCSD Theater and Dance Department with... Hi, I'm Jamie Nernwichit. And I'm here to Stolen. Here at UCSD, there's an emphasis on innovative research and interdisciplinary programs, uh, especially between the sciences and the arts. So we're always looking for an opportunity to engage those two seemingly different constituencies. Uh, after meeting Sara, I realized how similar engineering is to uh, specifically costume design, from creating ideas, to establishing a story, to working with professional theater artisans in the shops, the process, the methodology. So I was looking forward to seeing how our two different disciplines nest and how we can support one another. And so some of the challenges in order to translate clothing onto moving gears that may catch, there was a lot of communication, a lot of testing, and a lot of troubleshooting. We would kind of ping pong between each other. I'd take a look at the device and I'd play with fabrics on the device and see what catches, what doesn't. We decided natural fibers, the lightest one is silk, so we decided to go with that, otherwise static would get it to stick. And then we had SAR come in for some fittings with the belt when, it's, when it has been completed. And then we just played with it a little bit, see how it got moving, you know, cut fabric where it needed to be cut. Really custom this dress for this specific event and for this specific woman. Right here. Um, well, you know, I actually would say most of the more complicated features in this design, you know, um, came into the way the tentacle was supposed to behave like a tentacle. For me, taking what I wanted uh, in the design, what the team wanted, and, and breaking it down to where just basic actuators could do the job was probably the most challenging part. Um, and how do we compromise between uh, the functionality of what this can do versus the fabulousness of what the dress can look like? And so it was really kind of this balance of, um, of kind of understanding both of those and then, and then putting that together. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's be clear. This whole project is meant to showcase what you could do with a Snapdragon processor. And I think in this case of the robot dress, it's got a lot of expandability to it. You know, we can now miniaturize it to smaller actuators. We could add other sensors, cameras, all the kind of things we want to showcase with a Snapdragon processor. So this is the final fitting. I am terrified and excited at the same time. Um, this is all four tentacles working on this dress with the costume, let's see if it functions. Oh my gosh, it is. I can't believe it. How oh, cool. I really hope you enjoyed this journey about building this robot dress. At Thinkabit Lab, we really do like to empower the inventor. And with Qualcomm Innovation, with platforms like the Dragonboard 410C, you are only limited by your imagination. Learn how to innovate with Dragonboard 410C at Qualcomm Developer Network.